Perfect. Again, thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, what we were hoping to do, Ash and I, was to cover off on uh, figuring out how to avoid some of the mistakes that we're seeing here in the, the Cold Stone Creamery app, but essentially what not to do. And so you'll, you'll get from us a perspective on things that are going wrong and then a perspective from us on how we, how we found what they were doing differently and wrong. And then what, what uh, our design and design team came up with to improve the product. So to dive in here, I'm Zach Drew here. Sorry, my, my, uh, my home pod here is speaking to me in the background. The, I'm Zach Drew. I'm one of the principals here at Blue Label Labs and been around here at Blue Label now for about seven years, helping to drive sales, marketing, and partnerships. And I'm joined by Ashkan Eskandari, member of my team here, who has learned a ton about the restaurant space over the last year, working with a number of different companies that we'll dig into in a second. So who are we? It's Blue Label Labs is a digital product agency based in New York City, but with offices in Seattle and San Francisco as well. And we've worked with a ton of impressive brands, as you can see from the logos in the right-hand corner. I'm sure you've heard of a few of them. Uh, many of them are actually tech companies. And so uh, might surprise you that a Google or a Microsoft might actually need help from an agency like us to create a digital product, but they do. They need specialists to come in and build apps to support different divisions of their company, other ventures, other companies. And so no, no shame in it. And of course you guys, all restaurateurs, folks running and operating QSR and fast casual restaurants, much like Kung Fu Tea and Cirque at the top of the top right here, you guys are busy serving your customers, building great businesses, opening new locations, creating great experiences and brands and loyalty. And so surely no shame in coming to us for help with helping to build a, a digital product to serve those audiences. Very quick overview of, of four apps we've built in this space. Uh, Kung Fu Tea is surely one that is serving the most locations nationwide. These are all custom iOS and Android apps for all four of these companies. Kung Fu Tea is the largest bubble tea provider in the, in the country. Cirque, uh, a local regional coffee chain in the Midwest that's growing quickly. Uh, Magic Money being a essentially a bit of an anomaly in this space. They operate food and beverages at large events. So think about fairs, music festivals, rodeos across the country. They bring in their food and drink to those places. And so we built a set of apps for their customers. And then in-house, a bit of a different story too. So there's a, uh, essentially a, a luxury uh, group of restaurants that have a loyalty program built around um, serving foodies in, their, in that community. So four different implementations, uh, the two at the top, definitely closest aligned to the, the QSR types of products that you all might be interested in. So what are we? We're, we're working side by side with ambitious brands like yourselves to build new products, uncover transformative change, find new ways to serve your audience better through consulting, design, and engineering. So what we're gonna to cover today, we're gonna to give you a quick rundown of the Cold Stone app and what it's doing right and mainly what it's doing wrong and Ash will do that for you. Then we'll cover down on what some user feedback that we gathered. What did we hear from actual users of the Cold Stone app through some user testing effort that we did on our side. We'll uh, then review some of the mock-ups that we did essentially redesigning the the Cold Stone Creamery app to better fit the needs and the feedback we heard from users. And, and what does this mean for you guys? What is, what is the how-to? How do you learn from this? What are the things to avoid? And what can you do for your, your restaurants to deliver a great customer experience? We'll cover off on a few case studies, examples, and then end with, with Q&A. And with Q&A, you'll notice there's a Q&A button here in the presentation. Welcome to use that throughout the conversation today. And feel free to add any questions you might have there and we'll hold them and field them at the end. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen, turn it over to Ash to give you a rundown of what the Cold Stone Creamery app is doing today. Awesome, thanks Zach. So let's go ahead and pull this up. Oh, 
Awesome. Is that screen share looking okay on your side? Looking great. Excellent. So just a quick rundown here. Uh, their app gives users a map of the different locations they've got, uh, lets you find the ones closest to you. You can browse the menu, place orders, and pay for your order as well. You get to choose if you'd like to pick up the order or have it sent to you. And then, of course, they've got rewards implemented into the program, which is uh, fairly straightforward, right? Those four features you've got listed on the right. At this point, in terms of having a QSR, um, fast casual, any type of app in the food and drink category, I'd say those four features are pretty much table stakes. The question is, how do you implement them? How does the user interact with those features and how do they all come together? So um, we've given a quick little rundown here on what, where they dropped the ball. Um, if you look on the left there, you'll notice the home screen sort of allows some creativity. Uh, to me, it just looks a lot like a, a very basic website. Um, Nothing really jumping out at you, nothing really being suggested, uh, no promotions, no um, no personalization or anything like that. Um, and I don't get from this view, right, that you're able to scroll to the left, scroll to the right, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the designs that we've done. Uh, and then, you know, there's the rewards inbox being promoted um, on that first screen, and then when you click on it, and when you tap on it, I should say, you can see where that takes you on the second screen. There's nothing there, right? And we call this that ghost town effect. It sort of lets the user, gives the user this vibe where not much is being done in this app. It's not being updated. It's not being maintained or anything like that. And you never want your users to get that impression. Uh, sort of like when you've got a customer comes to your physical location, you never want them to get the impression that no one's really maintaining this location. No one's cleaning it. No one's taking care of it. Uh, and then towards the right um, on that third slide, um, you've got a very generic menu presentation. Uh, we've all either stepped foot or walked by a Cold Stone Creamery, and you really get this like Willy Wonka um, feeling almost in terms of all the different suites that they have in front of you. And the way that they've displayed the menu here in the app is very vanilla, very bland. And then on the far right, the order process. It very much feels off brand. It um, feels as if this could be used, this same type of ordering format and flow could be used for any type of app that's in the food and drink category as opposed to something that's made specifically for Cold Stone. And we'll definitely touch on, touch on that a little bit more once we get into the user testing, and then once we review the designs that we've put together. Uh, so who's doing it differently, right? Uh, so we've got a slide from Baskin Robbins there, and that's what their current app is looking like. Uh, you can see that there's horizontal scrolls that allow you to go from one, as one access of the uh, toppings in the menu to the next. Uh, you've got an area at the bottom to enter some special instructions that allow you to customize your order which customers always like. And then on this other side, you've got Sonic. Um, that's how they allow you to customize the shake, uh, good graphics, uh, very easy navigation that allows you to go from one part of the customization to the other without having to constantly go back and forth from one page to another. And if we just go back here on the ordering flow, um, you'll notice on the far right, it's sort of got this um, survey-like feel to it, the survey look and feel to it. And we're gonna touch on that a little bit more again once we show you the mockups that we've done from our side. Uh, and then just some more examples of who else is doing it differently. Uh, Krispy Kreme, this is one of my favorite on the far left. When you choose a donut that you'd like to be a part of your package, part of your box, it shows a quick fun little animation where that donut gets put into that box on the top and you can see that visualization there very fun very unique way to go through this ordering process uh, crumble cookies one of the top rated apps in the food and drink category right now has a very similar flow in fact their home screen is also very fun very intuitive you can sort of spin the cookies around but here whenever you choose a cookie it gets placed in that cookie box and then tapping on a cookie will take it out of that cookie box so again this is how they wanted their customers to interact with their brand when using the app as opposed to something that's much more generic and feels like you're filling out a form that could really be applicable to any food and drink category and then on the far right we've got an example of a nice home screen that tells you a lot that shows you a lot from insomnia uh, you can see that, that there's a horizontal scroll you can choose where you want the item to be delivered to and then if you keep scrolling vertically there's more items being suggested and featured for you uh, now here we've got that side by side. So again, on that left, you'll see what I meant when I said that you've got this survey like feel to it. You just choose what you want, check the box and then move on. No use of graphics or visuals. Whereas if you look at Sonic or Jamba Juice, definitely a little bit more lively, uh, a little bit more dynamic pops out at you, uh, a little bit more exciting. And then on Jamba, you could see that they've got a horizontal scroll and then you could easily choose to view all in case you want to see all of the toppings in a list view.
And uh, let's talk about the importance of user reviews. Uh, at the end of the day, there's lots of different ways to get user feedback, and Zach's going to touch on one of those. I'm going to go ahead and touch on user reviews for a second. App Store reviews are a lot more important than you might think. And just a quick breakdown of some statistics here. Uh, almost 80% of app users take a look at ratings and reviews before deciding if they want to install an app. Uh, and quite a few of them look at their same ratings and reviews before they decide they want to make a purchase through an app. Uh, over half of users check ratings and reviews before installing an updated version. And then just under half trust ratings and reviews more than they trust personal recommendations. Pretty eye-opening stats there. And we've got a few quick examples of what you might get from your app store reviews. Uh, these can come in all different shapes and sizes. Some can give you insight on what to add, what to improve, um, what to adjust from a design perspective. Um, we've got a few little mini quotes here. Um, if you're not able to save the settings, if the notifications are just overwhelming, if you're not really able to access your payment options, that could create lots of frustration, ultimately causing the user to either log out of the app and place their order somewhere else or delete the app entirely. Um, if you push the back button, this is something that I'm always shocked when I am sort of testing an app belonging to a QSR or fast casual. If you're in the ordering process and you want to just go back to the screen that you were just in, uh, you'd be surprised how often that takes you all the way back to the home screen and the user has to completely start the process from the beginning by choosing their location and then going through the entire process once again from step one, which causes a lot of frustration. And then in lots of instances, entering a promo code or choosing to select an add-on from the cart or order review screen might crash or cause the uh, app to lag. So these are just a uh, set of examples in terms of what you might get when you take a look at your app store reviews. And it's important to also respond when necessary and let the, uh, let the customer know that you have an eye on that. And customer service is very important. We've got a pretty famous quote here uh, from the CEO and founder of Zendesk in terms of how important customer service interactions are, especially in today's day and age, when the customer is able to interact with so many different brands and products in such a short period of time, you really want to make sure that you're making a lasting impression on your customers. Uh, we've also got a few examples of what people have left in the App Store reviews about the Cold Stone app. And some of these reviews are more performance-based in terms of the app just not working. And then others might be a little bit more based off of design or functionality, uh, glitchy to the point that you can't use. Uh, you never want to hear that. Um, needs fixing. Uh, in this case, this is someone that did a quick little cross-reference and understood that DoorDash uh, makes more sense. So obviously in that scenario, Coldstone missed out. And then here, uh, design, things getting cut off, um, trying to order deliver is a nightmare. Um, and this just goes back to doing whatever you can to make sure that when a customer is interacting with your brand, interacting with your product, they're not experiencing frustration and, uh, and disappointment. And we're gonna touch on that a little bit more once we get to the user testing side of things. So as important as App Store reviews are, uh, you know, there are definitely other ways of getting feedback from users and certainly more proactive ways of doing that. And user testing is one of those methods. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let Zach take over here. Thanks. So in addition to reviews, which are, of course, verbatims from your, your users, User testing is a way or a tool we use in the design process of any, of the building of any app that helps us to uncover what are the things that a user wants and needs? What is it that an app is not doing that it needs to be doing? And we can accomplish this by, by often showing off simple design, design assets, showing some mock-ups of, hey, this is what the app does today. Here's what it could do if redesigned. Let us show you that picture, that, that visual of what it could be doing to gather feedback from those users. And that is often enough to start to set a course or a direction for what the app could be doing better. And so with this Coldstone app in particular, we ran some user testing. Uh, when it comes to what we learned, you know, at the end of the day, it's sort of the answers to the test, right? The users are telling us, what is it that that Coldstone app isn't doing well enough uh, to meet their needs? What could it be doing better? And so it really does help guide that UX and UI decision making uh, as we're designing a product like this. It, it helps you understand how to reduce frustration with your users. How do you get 
a deeper share of wallet, more frequent orders, larger orders, more loyalty. And, and similarly, the amount of time spent in the app, right? Frustrated users are not gonna oh, no, waste, waste their time with an app when they could go and, and use the, the apps of the, the evil empires of the, the grub pubs or the Uber Eats of the world who uh, are taking a, a healthy cut of, of any and all of your profits, right? If we can build a product that is serving the needs as well as a grub pub or an Uber Eats, and giving the users an experience that they would expect there in your native app that you own and can control, you're gonna be in a better spot. So very explicitly, what are the, what are the questions we asked uh, Coldstone Creamery app users? We, we asked them what their thoughts were on the home screen and the load and uh, comparing that experience to others in the space. We asked them to go through the, the process of creating an order. Uh, what was that experience like? How could we improve it? We asked users what their thoughts were on the rewards program, the depiction of the rewards, the characteristics of the rewards itself, and then what were the things they'd recommend at a high level to change is question four. And, and question five is, how did you feel about the idea of suggestions and personalization? What could the Coldstone Creamery app have done better on the personalization front? So these are the five questions we asked Coldstone Creamery app users. And here are some of the responses we got. Um, we highlighted some of the keywords here to give you a sense for what are the, what are the users saying? What are the core points of, of interest here? So the idea of that home screen, as they call it here, a home page, how could that needs to be more exciting? Uh, something more lively and whimsical, much like the the experience in a store, right? The app itself doesn't deliver that. And that's what this particular user is, is telling us. In terms of this next user, the, the problem here was their, their understanding of the rewards program, right? It doesn't go in depth enough to tell you what are you earning points for? How are you earning those rewards? What are they redeemed for? So sort of the lack of depth in the rewards program itself turned off this particular user. Uh, and lastly, the idea of the, the cart not having its own section, right? Uh, not being able to quickly get to your cart and be able to check out with efficiency is something that everybody is expecting these days. And the fact that in this instance, the Coldstone app doesn't do that very clearly or well was frustrating this particular user. The next user was telling us a bit more about um, the fact that when they go to Coldstone, the, they, they like to create their own their own ice cream, create the, the thing that they want. And the idea that in this particular app, it didn't facilitate that idea of, of creating your own easily and, and quickly. And so the idea of customizing that fully, I want, you know, I only want, I only want a handful of, of those peanut butter M&Ms and definitely only one gummy bear, right? The, the idea of being able to customize at that level was something this app didn't allow for, but something they can tell that, uh, that scooper at the location and they feel like they couldn't replicate that here with, with the Coldstone app. This next user was touching on the fact that that homepage, that homepage experience that we saw earlier that Ash showed us, it's pretty sparse. There wasn't a lot there. It was a lot of empty real estate, not really delivering any value to the user other than a lot of white space. The next, uh, the next user tester told us that the, the menu, as, as I showed, was lacking in detail, visuals, and content, right? It was, it's just a list. It's just a checklist. And it, it doesn't have that same look and feel and experience of being able to see all the great topping that you can get at a, at a Cold Stone location. The next user tester was, it was telling us, you know, what is it that they like about the store, right? It's a kid in the candy store type of, of feel, very whimsical feel that the Cold Stone's brand is trying to deliver. And the app is not doing that. It's got no imagination or imagery. Pretty fair assessment compared to what we, what we just saw in those screens. The next user tester told us that you don't get a, you don't get a picture at the end of what you're gonna get, right? You, you've just created a, your own special concoction here uh, and now you don't really know at the end of the day what is exactly that I've ordered the ability to maybe see that could be something this particular user found to be appealing the next user focused on um, this homepage 
And the, the fact that once you get into the app, you can you can simply get elsewhere, but it wasn't delivering the kinds of experience that this user would have expected. There's not enough there. So in summary, you know, what is it that we, we learned from uh, this bulk of, of user testing? So the, the numbers don't lie. And, and in this case, we, we learned that 70% of users didn't like the home screen. They thought it was bland, lacking imagination, lacking anything of real substance or interest. And 60% of users felt like the ordering process was vanilla, not fun, not at all like the in-store experience. And 50% of users said, they don't really understand the awards. I'm not sure what they're for. I'm not sure how I, how I actually become a loyal customer of Cold Stone Creamery. And um, so there are some pretty core features here, a home screen, ordering process and rewards. If you think about it, what more, what more do you wanna do in, a, in an app for your users than deliver a really solid home experience so that they know what to do and gives them some clear calls to action? You'll be able to order really quickly and efficiently and do it in a way that feels on brand. And then a reward system that, you're, that your users actually understand and want to use. And so they wanna be loyal, but if you don't give them the reason why, or, or make it easy for them to do that, you're not, you, you, won't, you won't win the game. So I will turn this back to Ash here, who will give us a, a walkthrough of some of the mock-ups that we created, that we designed based on that user feedback that we gathered. You're muted, Ash, sorry. Thanks, Matt. So let's go and dive in. Um, I got the uh, visuals here for a quick little, nice new uh, iteration on the home screen that our design team put together. Um, there's a lot more for the user to interact with, a lot more for the user to see, and it's certainly more exciting than uh, the home screen that's currently there. Um, the arrows on the top, you can see there's a little bit of a horizontal scroll, uh, and this is for different promotions, different announcements, different features. Then you obviously got access to the rewards very quickly. And then it's very clear to tell that there's a vertical scroll for the user to continue scrolling up and down. In this case, we've chose to show that there's also a featured flavors horizontal scroll as well. So quite a bit going on. We're throwing a few different options at the user and allowing them to create an order quickly as opposed to going through the standard ordering process. This is just sort of suggesting something to them right off that. We've got a side by side here that shows you a little bit more about what I mean. Uh, that's the current home screen on the left, and this is the one that we've come up with on the right. The, for example, having the order button both, you know, you've got that red order button and then the regular order button on the left, to me, it doesn't really make much sense. Choosing a location, that could be done simply by starting the ordering process. It's a few elements here that truly could be improved upon, and we wanted to kind of touch on that. Uh, another thing to note, in the, left, in the screenshot on the left, that um, profile button in the top left corner, that would go away once you've essentially scrolled further down. Uh, on the right, we've got a nav bar that means you can access your profile and account information no matter where you are within the app. So it's these tiny things that just ultimately, uh, in terms of the details making up the big picture that allow for the user to have a much better experience within the app itself. Uh, and then also you'll notice in the top right corner, we've added a cart that always shows the user what's in their current order. Something like that doesn't currently exist within the current app. Uh, ordering ice cream really should be fun. Um, and we're gonna show you a side by side here, but this is a nice little variation that we put together. Um, you guys saw the screenshots we showed of Sonic and Jamba and Krispy Kreme and Insomnia Cookies and Crumble Cookie. Uh, this new ordering flow gives you more of that trademark Cold Stone vibe, what you experience when you actually go and visit one of their physical stores. Uh, it creates a more memorable in-app experience. And perhaps more importantly than anything, when you're interacting with the Cold Stone brand, this is what you want. You don't want to feel like you're filling out a very bland survey. And here is the current ordering flow. So let me just sort of go back here. Uh, this is the mix-in side of the ordering process. And then on the right here, you can see you'd have to select a flavor and then you'd have to choose your additional mix-ins. Um, again, I, I feel like this could be, this format could be done for any type of app that's, you know, taking some type of an order, any type of app. 
Um, so now we've got the three different steps for our ordering flow. So I'm going to go back to what Cold Stone's app currently is showing. You select the flavor, then you choose your mix-ins. If you go to the right there, we've got choose the size, like it, love it, got to have it. And then you can select your flavor. And if you notice the graphics on the top, that's sort of showing you that, um, that tub view. This is what you're getting in terms of the flavor itself. And you go to the right, now we've got the ice cream on that marble slab. And we've all seen the process. It's, um, it almost gives you, like I said earlier, that Willy Wonka vibe in terms of just feeling like you're in a candy store. Uh, and then as you choose ingredients, they would appear at the top and you can choose up to 10 and you can easily choose to add more in terms of like extra blueberries and scrolling all the way to the bottom would have an area for the user to leave a customized or personalized note. If you could, please don't put too many M&Ms, whatever the case may be. Uh, and this just sort of shows you both uh, side by side. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that would choose to, if presented with the option, which one of these ordering flows would you rather have in your app? Uh, I don't think there was anyone that would you know, choose to go with the setup on the left. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of Zach's thunder here because he's gonna touch up on this in a moment when we talk about the different types of apps that you can provide at your QSR or your fast casual restaurant. And ultimately, you know, Cold Stone is sort of um, boxed into a, a scenario where they have to use this format for their app because they're using a pre-existing template or a white labeled solution uh, or one size fits all off the shelf type of model for their mobile app. And what we're emphasizing here during this entire webinar is that when you choose to go in a more custom path for your app's design and development uh, really sky's the limit in terms of how you want your customers to interact with your brand, to interact with your app, you get to own that entire ordering experience. So much like you would train your employees, much like you would essentially make sure that the locations are built a certain way to make sure that when customers walk into your stores, they are obviously buying the right products and spending more on each order, you would be able to design your app in that same format. And, and that's really one of the main things that we wanted to get across during this webinar. When you choose to go the path of custom app design and development, which is exactly what we specialize in, and once again, sky's the limit, you're able to own that ordering experience and obviously optimize what happens after that in terms of that ticket creation process. If you're able to, if you want to suggest certain items to your customers, promote certain things, make announcements, send push notifications at certain times. If someone is within a certain distance of your location, suggest this item to them. If someone is this many points away from a reward, we want to push this message to them. All of these things become much more possible and potent when you choose to go down the path of custom app design and development. So that being said, I'll go ahead and stop and uh, let Zach take over. Perfect. So what does this mean for you guys, right? At the end of the day, uh, the idea of the sky's the limit makes a lot of sense, but there are, there are always considerations for time and budget and the like. So I wanted to get into some of that here. But to summarize some of the pieces of the puzzle for a you know, the winning recipe for a QSR app, the idea of keeping easy in the eyes, right? Quick, clean uh, user interface that is matching the kinds of high-end user interfaces that a user is engaging in every day, whether it's something like an Uber or the, the Apple interfaces. They are clean and easy to use, and that's why people love them. Feeling loved. The idea of personalization, recommendations, uh, making sure that the user feels like this is built for them. It is matching their needs, whether it be about their location, understanding where they are, whether it's about helping them understand what, where they are against earning their next reward, uh, telling, giving you your name. People like to be like to be recognized from those ways. No lines, no hassle, right? Make sure that that path to checkout is easy and seamless. The idea of uh, who needs a server when you've got a, a fast, enjoyable ordering process, you order ahead, you go and pick it up. Those kinds of things are, are something that users are expecting these days in you know, QSR, fast casual app. And then free food. Who doesn't love that? Uh, the idea of rewards and loyalty, making sure that the, the program itself is, is clear. It's clear how do you earn the rewards. It's clear what you get when you've achieved a certain milestone or reward. And then it's fun, that it's actually fun to be a part of, 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 of the, in this case, Coldstone Creamery's loyalty program. So five pieces to the puzzle. 
but what does it mean for you guys? I, how can you start down the path of building an app that looks as beautiful as some of these uh, mock-ups we've done for Cold Stone Creamery? Well, you got to start somewhere. And most people in the restaurant space, namely QSR and Fast Casual, start over on the far left with the concept of a, an off-the-shelf type of loyalty provider. Folks like Level Up and Punch are give you a white labeled app that allows you essentially much of what you saw on the, the Cold Stone Creamery's current app. A very vanilla experience to use an ice cream pun. And it, it restricts you in what you can do with it, right? You're, you're trapped in the framework that a level up, a punch has created for you with the with the app. But of course, it is the cheapest option. It is the it is the lowest cost option in the in the bunch. In the middle here, we've got what we call a hybrid approach. So we found that a lot of restaurants and restaurant teams don't know that this is a path. This this middle phase of between off the shelf and fully custom, it is, a, it is a thing. And what it means to build a hybrid app is that you don't fully remove the loyalty provider from the equation. So again, a provider like a, a Punch, a Level Up, Patronix, et cetera, there's a slew of them out there. You don't remove them from the equation entirely. You let them exist as they do to power certain parts of the, the product. Namely, some of the loyalty elements, some of the payment processing, perhaps, or, or, or some of the, the menu functionality. Essentially, you leverage them for what they're good at, and you add to that something more custom. So it's wide hybrid. It's not quite off the shelf. It's not quite custom. It's somewhere in between. And it tends to be the step that a lot of QSR and fast casual restaurants take to improve upon that off the shelf experience and deliver something that's essentially cost effective um, to their users before they're ready to move to something fully custom. So that moves us to the far right. What does it mean to have a fully custom map? Uh, we've listed Chipotle, Dunkin' Starbucks here, right? Those are the uh, 500 pound gorillas in the space, but there are plenty of smaller restaurants, including some that we've built uh, who went custom from the start because they wanted to control that brand experience. And it tended to be that main driver. They knew that a white labeled app was not going to deliver users the kind of brand experience they wanted. And so they went custom right from the beginning. Uh, fully custom means you're not relying on a loyalty provider like a Punch or Patronix. Uh, you're building the infrastructure fully from the ground up. Truly the most expensive of the paths, but it the theory is that it, it plays itself out into in greater loyalty, uh, greater brand loyalty, increased sales, paying less money to Grubhub and, and Uber Eats and the like. So those are the three flavors of restaurant apps and essentially what is an evolution for the typical QSR fast casual from off the shelf to something often hybrid to something that's fully custom. Just to make sure we're crystal clear on what we mean by, by off the shelf. Just Salad is a, another example of a, an off the shelf app uh, powered by, in this case, Level Up. The, on the left, you see there's, there's nothing on the promo side. You, you, get a, you get a nice image, but those images don't change easily or frequently enough for you to be able to put in a, uh, an interesting promo there. Very static, um, no personalization. In the middle, super limited payment options. You're really just, you're gonna add a credit card and hope for the best, and that's about it. And on the right, the idea of there's nowhere to add promo codes. Uh, there isn't a way to clearly add or at that order. You've got the order set there. And as Ash mentioned before, his biggest frustration with any of these food apps is no back button. All right, I've got this stuff in my cart, but what do I do now? I have to actually just cancel the order if I wanna go back and, uh, change from that crispy poblana salad to, to something different. That's an off the shelf experience. Very limited in its functionality, very limited in the way it looks and feels and doesn't deliver the best brand experience. But again, can be a starting point for QSR fast casual who doesn't have an app today. It's a fine starting point. It's a way to dip the toe in the water uh, before you move to something that might be 
a little more uh, hybrid, which would be the Sweet Green app. So Sweet Green, it looks a lot better. We could see that pretty objectively from the beginning. And that's because they're using Level Up to power some of the functionality, namely the menu in this case, but they're adding a, a ton of customization on top of it. So personalization, right, very clear uh, from the start over on the left-hand screen. Nice to meet you, Ashcon, right? Ashcon's first use of the Sweet Green app. That message changes as you start to use the app. It's a good afternoon, good morning, good evening, right? A little bit of a friendliness in the brand that, that is being delivered through this hybrid app. In the middle, uh, as opposed to an off-the-shelf solution where, you know, good luck if you get a dietary restriction into your order. Here in the middle, the hybrid app, you're able to add that in the Sweet Green app. You're able to tell them, hey, I'm, I'm trying to avoid these things. Please, please don't, don't include anything that might, might, might include nuts, dairy, et cetera. And on the far right, the, the quick ability to adjust an order. Not, not a big, doesn't seem like a big deal, but for a user experience perspective, having to cancel an order and go rebuild it, uh, because you, you, know, you forgot to, to say that you didn't, wanna, you didn't want cheese on that is a problem. And so the ability to quickly modify an order is important. Then you see the add-ons. Add-ons are huge, right? The idea of, okay, you're close to closing this, this order or making the purchase. Um, you're excited for your salad. And now you're like, oh, you know what? I think I do want a drink. You know, I do want something else. And the ability to suggest add-ons that might even be particularly paired to this particular uh, salad, great way to, to grow that, that uh, size of order. And then the ability to uh, clearly navigate throughout the app, be able to go, go back and see the menu again. This is a, a hybrid example, right? It, it does a whole lot more than the off the shelf version. It looks beautiful. And, and at, the, at, the, at the most complex end of the scale, we've got Chick-fil-A. Uh, Chick-fil-A, pretty top notch app in a lot of ways high level of personalization, very well laid out navigation and calls to order, <coughs> sorry, calls to action, meaning the pick up at a restaurant, deliver to me, order catering, right? They, they wanna deliver to this user uh, three really clear calls to action to make this a really fast start to the ordering process. In the middle, much like you saw in our redesign of the, the Cold Stone app is a highly visual menu. Let's see what you're what you're getting. Let's make sure we fully understand. And then it's enticing and appetizing at the end of the day. That's what we need uh, to order. And then on the far right, uh, easily favorite an order, uh, be able to horizontally scroll, add a few more items to your order, and a very clear nav throughout. So the the difference between the two, right? There's the, the hybrid app still relies on some of the level up powered backend for the menu and the like. Uh, over on the right, the customization is just so much heavier. You can see and feel the fact that this is purpose built for Chick-fil-A and their customers. And those are the three, three types of apps and often the evolution. Again, off the shelf, something hybrid, and then something fully custom. When you're at a size, number of locations, that that it warrants the the investment in a custom branded experience. So, to chat about some of our case studies, and move us really quickly. We've already talked about them before. Kung Fu Tea, a little before and after for you, right? Kung Fu Tea came to us fully powered by Level Up, a white labeled solution, and and delivered. They were delivering their users what you see on the left really lackluster, not very on brand. Uh, when you look to the right, what are you seeing? You're seeing clear indications of a, a rewards program showing you exactly where you are to earning your next, what you actually know you're gonna earn a free drink, right? It's super explicit. You're only 86 bubbles away from the next free drink. Tells your user where they are, tells them what they're gonna get, super explicit. Quick reorder, all right? People are loyal customers love to order the same thing, right? They're loyal for a reason. They wanna come back and get their favorite thing. So why not put at the top of the, the home screen, the ability to quickly reorder their favorite drink? This is what users ask for in our user testing and this is what we've delivered for them. And then offers, offers that are specific to the individual based on where they are, based on their purchase history. Um, 
are here in the middle and some giveaways down at the bottom. The idea is this is a hybrid app for, for Kung Fu Tea. They're still working off the Level Up backend. So Level Up is powering things like their, uh, their menu items. Um, but the experience, the front end experience that, that Kung Fu Tea users are getting now is one that they would expect from the brand that has uh, got 250 locations and is the, the biggest bubble tea, tea chain in the country. That's Kung Fu Tea. Cirque, this is an example of custom from the beginning, right? Kung, Cirque did not want to bother with a, a white labeled off the shelf provider from the beginning. Uh, they knew that that wasn't the brand experience they wanted. Cirque wanted to be a mobile first type of shop. They actually barely have physical locations, so to speak. They're literally in shipping containers. So they, bring, they, they, they retrofit these beautiful shipping containers, very on brand, very cool uh, throughout the Midwest. And there, there is no ordering from a barista. The baristas are there to make, make the coffee, make the drinks, make the food, uh, and then have that interaction with the customer while they're delivering it. So it, it, it means they can have less staff in the, in the stores and they feel like their staff has better interactions with their, with their customers. Custom from the beginning in this case. In the first screenshot, we see recent orders <coughs> because in most cases, somebody is gonna be coming back to that store and going to pick up that order. In the middle, super beautiful visuals of their super unique drinks and with a, a persistent cart at the bottom showing you what you're ordering and great pics of, of the food on the far right. So this app is in market live, being used by uh, thousands of people every day to order at CERC locations. This is an example, again, of a custom app from the start. No level up, no Patronics involved here. <coughs> Magic Money, like I mentioned, is, is concessions and food at at different large events throughout the country. And the set of apps we built for them so a different purpose, right? Essentially more of a declining balance sort of implementation. Um, so instead of buying tickets or coupons, the idea is much like a Disney, if you've been, you get that wristband and you have a declining balance. You tap that wristband uh, across the, the, the venue to be able to pay for things. We built something similar here for Magic Money that does that. And so those are the set of examples of things that we've done in the, the recent past. And so now we'll open it up for some Q&A and let us know what questions you've got. Ash, you wanna cover that first one? Yeah, sure. So here. Perfect, okay, that's actually a good question. Uh, so it's sort of doubling down on what we had mentioned earlier. Uh, why? wouldn't Cold Stone choose to implement that same type of visualization for their ordering process? Great question, fair question. Um, just sort of goes back to what Zach had mentioned earlier. Um, they are implementing a off the shelf style of mobile app currently. Uh, and because of that, I think the term I used earlier is boxed in. And it, it really, it, I think is a very accurate word to use to describe this type of situation. Um, when you're using an off the shelf app or one size fits all, I like to call it, uh, solution from a loyalty service provider. They've essentially built an app that's got a series of flows and all you're really doing is putting in your logo, putting in product names, and then, you know, importing product prices. And that's just about it. Apart from that, the flow is really the same. User selects an item, user adds item to cart, user enters payment method, and then order gets sent to whatever the physical location is for that store. Uh, so in these scenarios, how you're able to customize and uh, essentially tailor that experience to your business, to your business's goals, um, you really can't. In lots of cases, there's zero customization. Uh, in some cases, there are customization options, but in most cases, zero customization, which is why, uh, for example, with Kung Fu Tea, we're helping them with this in-between step, this hybrid path, which means you know we're essentially still working with their existing loyalty service provider, but we're allowing them to create this brand new in-app experience on a brand new app completely. We're launching a brand new app for them that will still integrate with their current loyalty service provider, which means that this is how we want our customers to order drinks. This is how we want them to choose which toppings go into the drinks. 
which ingredients, uh, choose if they want extra ingredients or less of this ingredient, that type of thing. Again, you get to own that entire ordering experience once you choose to steer away from that path of um, one size fits all or off the shelf type of app. Uh, Zach, do you want to take this next question from David? Absolutely. So David's asking me, how much capital and time do we need to allocate for a full custom project in general? Do you build it full featured or MVP first? MVP standing for minimum viable product. So let's see, I'd say the, the simplest way to answer that is it, it, it depends, but <laughs> I'll give you some averages. The, the average custom app from the ground up, meaning we're not going to rely on a loyalty provider like a Level Up or a Punch or Patronix to power any of it. Uh, it could range anywhere from two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars for a fully custom app, and that would take somewhere order of magnitude five to six months on average to build. That's a pretty full featured app at that point, and so I'm giving you really the high water mark of a very full featured uh, product. Could you build a an app that is more of an MVP, more of a minimum viable product with just a a core set of features, a smaller smaller set of complexity, absolutely. And, and that could end up somewhere closer to a two hundred dollars to $300,000 range. Um, that's full custom. When it comes to the, the concept of the hybrid, right? That hybrid model I mentioned, there's some efficiencies there. You've got the loyalty provider who's, who's handling some of, the, some of the complexities of things like a menu, pricing, et cetera, maybe even some of the loyalty um, features that also shaves off cost, right? And so I think order of magnitude for a, a cost, sorry, a, a hybrid solution built on top of a punch of Patronix and some other features of functionality, somewhere between 150 and 200,000 over four to five months is, is not out of the realm of, of possibility. That's roughly the range. So again, hybrid 150 to 250 built on top of a punch level up, et cetera, fully custom we're talking. 250 at the low end to, you know, sky's the limit, but rare that we've seen something over say 400,000. That's the explanation of price and timeline. Yeah, there's, um, there's sort of like this um, interesting way of looking yeah. at it. Um, we found sort of helps, um, can, helps things get contextualized in the eyes of someone who's running the marketing or the operations for a QSR or a fast casual or really any type of business that's uh, in that food and drink category. Uh, and it's sort of just sort of a um, good lens to use when you're looking at this process of, you know, what type of app should we get? Um, when you are training the people in your physical locations, you typically want them to greet customers, potentially suggest certain items, um, ideally even remember what that customer ordered the last time they were there, uh, be very friendly, be very courteous, all this goes without saying, you wanna make sure that when that customer steps foot in your physical location, they get that, that special treatment, that VIP treatment that's, um, that your brand is known for, that your QSR, your fast casual restaurant is known for. And you, know, you would want your app to do that exact same thing to the customer because you know you got a lot of face time, right? If you can get your customer to download your restaurant's branded app, as opposed to specifically using Uber Eats or DoorDash or Grubhub, um, that's a very lucrative space to be in, knowing that you've got that type of attention, you've got that user's attention. So now when you have your app built the way you want it to be built, you can make suggestions, you can offer certain featured items, um, you can promote the rewards program, you can send them push notifications at certain times. You can really do all of these things exactly the way that you would train your staff in your stores to do them. Um, but going back to what we mentioned earlier about you know limitations and being boxed in, when you choose to go down the path of an off the shelf, uh, one size fits all type of app from a loyalty service provider, you don't get that same uh, power, I guess you could say, in terms of how you're able to promote items, how you're able to um, control the way that the consumer interacts with your brand when they're on a mobile app. Hope that, uh, hope that helped to make sense. Another question from Anastasia is, what's, a, what size of, of uh, QSRs typically come your way for, for app builds? Um, I think I can answer that in a few different ways. I think 
it, it's clearly often a matter of whether the your your budget your your marketing budget your operations budget will allow for it is one way to think about it but what we've found to be most typical is those qsrs or fast casuals that are at an inflection point somewhere between um, 15 and 30 locations uh, tend to be where we see most of our customers come our way inquiring about a custom app and of course every qsr fast casual is different your your revenue per shop is different profitability per shop is different so it, it really varies greatly but order of magnitude 15, 20, 30 locations, it seems to be that sweet spot where folks are saying, you know what, I need to, I need to double down on my brand and I can't rely on a white labeled provider uh, that is kind of sullying it and, and not delivering the kind of real high-end brand experience I, I want to deliver to my customers. Uh, that's, that's sort of one perspective on how to, how to answer you know, when you're ready, or when you might be ready, or what size do you need to be at for this to make sense for you? A question here from David. Um, what if we are virtual and delivery only based on the ghost cafes? Think Starbucks 2.0 without stores, but produced in ghost cafes and delivered to your door in the morning by a set time. Yeah, so the process would be the same. I mean, the the reason you know I emphasize on the word custom when we say custom app design and development is because we build these digital products based on your business's unique goals. Um, if you remember at the very beginning of today's webinar, when we showed the breakdown of the Cold Stone app in terms of the features, choose locations, interact with the menu, place order, pay for order. I mean, that's table stakes, right? Every single app does that. But when you go custom, you get to be a lot more specific about how they do that and what that interaction looks like, what it feels like. So to answer your question, um, David, none of what we've said uh, in terms of going down the path of um, app design or development through an agency like us that specialize in building customized products for our clients, um, none of that, none of what you've mentioned here in terms of being virtual and delivery only would be uh, a roadblock of any sort. Does that make sense, David? Please feel free to you know, follow up with any additional questions. The only thing I'd add to that answer is the concept of of delivery and delivery fulfillment. I think I think part of the idea of a, a ghost kitchen or ghost cafe is that you've likely already figured out the operational hurdles associated with actually facilitating that delivery. Um, and so the you know the the build on our side, right? The the app experience, it, it would just have to take into account the fact that you're going to have a delivery team on the other end. So that could mean, could mean, um, and not, not necessarily, but could mean that there's a an app that, that the delivery staff for your ghost kitchen or cafe might use to uh, fulfill those orders, right? Be able to pick up an order, pick up a shift, um, know where to deliver it. So something very lightweight uh, for your delivery staff, that might be the only difference I can envision um, the front end experience, I don't see how that has to change much or at all, right? You could you deliver the same types of uh, five pieces of the puzzle, five pieces, five elements of that recipe. You still need to do that on the front end for your users, but you may have the added complexity of the, the delivery team associated. And that's, that might be the difference. We might have to build a little something, maybe a little app for the, the delivery folk. And David, actually one other note on that too. I mean, I would really recommend downloading the Chipotle app after this webinar and entering your address and then going back to the home screen uh, on the home page of the Chipotle app, it'll give you an ETA. It'll say based off of the designated address or the default address you have saved in our app, we can get a burrito to you at this time. And it'll be like 30, 40 minutes from now or whatever. They're able to do that because Chipotle, when they chose to add delivery to their custom built app, instead of building a complete delivery flow on their own, they chose to integrate with DoorDash. So DoorDash has a delivery API that they can put into different restaurants apps. For example, the Kung Fu Tea app that we're building for them, we're gonna be using Grubhub's delivery API. Um, so that's just something to consider as well. Um, we'll be able to create similar features and um, different add different elements like that for customers in an app that's uh, requiring or offering delivery as an option when it comes to uh, getting your food and or drinks. So to DoorDash's API would be one example of that. And if you wanna see how that works, I would really recommend downloading the Chipotle app because they've implemented it very, very well. And you know we'd be able to implement that same type of technology when custom designing and developing a mobile app, especially one that requires, uh, requires delivery. So, perfect. 
Awesome. Well, we're close to top of the hour here. Just wanted to thank everybody for joining. In terms of um, follow up from here, we've, we've done a few other webinars in the QSR space that we will send links to along with a, a link to this recording. If you wanted to share that with any of your colleagues or teams, and we will do that shortly after today's webinar. So thanks again. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.